All right, for some single overhead cam love, we are tasked to develop an intake manifold. Therefore, we'll be porting it and showing it to you guys a D16 Z6 PO8 intake manifold and how possibly it could be better than a P2J VTI manifold, aside from the misconceptions. And also, we'll talk about certain combinations and why it works and why some does not work, and also discuss about efficiency and all the things things that leads to a good performing engine that creates good power. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Okay, we, we, we remove the mock up throttle because the plenum is actually sawn off. You know, we hand sawed the plenum off. All right, now we're gonna remove it just to show you guys the whole, you know, the whole image of how the intake pathway goes to the chamber on the head and then into the exhaust. And I understand that not everyone can visualize it like that. But the thing is with me, I like to mock up all the parts like this because it just gives me a good visual and suddenly I get more ideas or more innovation and in how to improve the engine's efficiency and power. You know, I just have that thing. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I love building and designing engines. And that is why as I make all these videos, I try to show you guys or share what I've actually visualized because it's really hard to explain it without the videos or visuals. Okay, now let, let me squeeze this in for you guys. Let's put the plenum back on and reuse a, this is a 68 millimeter throttle flange plate that we made. Okay, we're gonna show you something here. This is probably why going 70 millimeter on the D16Z6 manifold is a no good option or no go because look, it reaches the IACV port. So hey, if you run a 70 millimeter, you're not gonna idle at all. So that is not an option here, all right? Okay, now let me show you something really interesting that makes this a lot better than the P2J intake manifold or the VTI manifold. Okay, here you can see the runner entry from the plenum, right? Okay, now let's turn this around to show you guys some details. Okay, here. Okay, here you can see the runner one and four is actually equal to two and three. Unlike the VTI or the P2J, runner one and four are actually longer. So the volume is more. And this was individually tested or researched by a fellow in dseries.org. You guys can search it. And he was surprised all the volume of each runner is the same. And this is because look here what honda did for the d16 z6 they moved the runner two and three back this way it gives it a little bit more length you know and it equalizes on the runner one and four so which is good making it more on the ultimate efficiency or power Whereas the P2J or the VDI has unequal runner lengths and volume, one in four, but the plenum is bigger. So when you think about it, is that a good combination or not? Like when you, if, if someone tells you that the VTI is better because of the bigger plenum, that's like saying Dwayne Johnson is better than Kobe Bryant in basketball just because he has more muscles. It doesn't make sense, right? So it cannot be just better. And one thing it has to be better overall or the combination. Now let's get back to the porting bench. So all right now. Here we are with the carbide, oops. And we used ATF mixed with kerosene. All right, so you're going, we roughen it up to get the shape that we want. And we keep going. And now we, go, we gotta speed it up now. 
so that we don't get it too boring and all right shaping the with a carbide what's needed is to flare it properly just like it's a velocity stack you know or as, as if it's a velocity stack and the thing here is that you have to constantly provide taper as it travels towards the run so you're gonna start from big and it slowly tapers into the port flank that is why i port match at the last minute or you know right before assembly this way we don't go overboard or we don't make mistakes and we're gonna wash this up and go to the workbench to show you the initial shape from the carbide now won't you look at that it's taking shape as we you know as we shoot for the taper and the good opening and you know we're still gonna carve it open or like flare it up a little later here's the picture and you can see it's getting to the shape that we want to here up top look it looks good yeah all right now we go back with the 80 grit with the sanding roll okay here we are now ethyl alcohol and wa water and joy mix or soapy water all right we go with the 80 grit roll first all right so that we can smoothen the carbide cuts okay to speed it up all right this way once you start making passes on the 80 grit you start seeing if you have some bumps or lumps and sometimes you just have to go back with a carbide just to totally smoothen it out you know which is fine you know we go back and forth and later we'll talk about how you specifically choose a certain combination that works for you and what connects with the other things or part all right and here i talk about this manifold we have two po8 extra manifold here the reason why we're porting this is because this way when i got to rebuild my esi with the d16a6 we're gonna run it with the stock po8 first and then this ported po8 so we can compare the dyno and then lastly we will, we will dyno and test the, the ported skunk to intake manifold and you know obviously the itb you know so hey it's gonna be really fun right now let me talk about this for now this is the throttle right and then the intake and the plenum so the intake pipe or the simota intake pipe is three inches that goes here right so the three inches is actually 76 millimeter and then let's say you went with a b16 throttle or a b16 aef like a 58 millimeter throttle so it's 76 to 58 and then to the plenum that is actually a vena contracta which is actually the narrowest part of venturi look and then if you look at a venturi that's exactly how it is so who says the biggest throttle or a bigger throttle would help if your engine or if the engine is not demanding it or doesn't have enough compression or even cams then you know you could actually just keep the stock throttle and just spend your money on a good intake pipe and probably manifold and port work and all the good stuff right oh here we are now look and you can see it looks like each runner entry has a has its own mini velocity stack right the taper and the flaring of the entry is really really good now you know compared to stock right and at this angle you can see it's gonna be flowing really really good so when you think about it even with your stock throttle that vena contracta that's fine as long as the manifold is flowing itself really really well because you know and if you look here this is why we port match it uh last minute or towards the end because you know it may go to a different head so when you think about it if you're actually watching this video and you're local peep this we would sell this for just five thousand pesos you gotta comment down below if you have the same manifold so it's just gonna be a trade plus five thousand pesos and you can just message us that's because this manifold is for my car and we can afford time you know so just in case someone there needs this and of course when you think about it 
instead of buying a B16 throttle for the same cost, you can get this manifold for a trade. And this is a one time only deal because the manifold we charge here uh, 7,500. So, you know, just for now, we got this promo for you guys. Just a one time deal, you know, Keith Thurman, one time. And if you look here, this is the carbide finish, right? Let's go with the before and after and then here. So when you think about it, the manifold actually got a little bit bigger. So, you know, obviously more top end and more efficiency. Look, see the volume of the plenum increased. And of course, the taper and the flared entries. It looks really, really good, right? Mm-hmm. And so I hope the combination earlier that I mentioned, whether you would need a bigger throttle or not, it's all in the combination. So, you know, if someone tells you the, you know, they'd say that you need a B16 throttle, trust me. Or, you know, locally, like, basta kailangan mo. That no longer flies because... Your money has to be spent wisely. Unless they're gonna pay for it, then hey, let them try it for you, right? Because I doubt they know better than Giovanni Battista Venturi and Daniel Bernoulli. You know, I seriously doubt that. So unless they explain it better or why, I, I have doubts. They probably look the same though. They got the looks nailed down, but not the intellectual intelligence. And before I share any more tidbits, watch this video on the intake and you can just click here for that. It talks about Bernoulli's principle, all right? And then also this video about my spare cylinder head. And of course, I talk about the ITB and the necessary length and we show you on the dyno. So, hey, it's gonna be cool. Just click on this. And after all the intake tests, of course, we're gonna be running ITBs. This, I've measured it, and this is the longest out run. This way, there's space between the velocity stack opening and the firewall. The ITB is around 12.75 inches, almost 13 inches. So when we calculate on the other video, on the ITB video of my head, we will show you the dyno. And of course, this intake pipe too, this TBRIA, and we can't wait to try this, especially with the RAM Air, you know, that's going to be really, really good. So, hey, if you guys, if any of you guys are interested in, in, in the intake manifold, comment down below or DM us at our page. And of course, if you have any questions or ideas, let us know. Because we got a lot of things in line, but hey, you could be telling us something cool.